I didn't anticipate that out. It's kind of like one of those fit fit with them. Okay, are we ready to go? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. This is the February meeting of the Lowndes, Valdosta County. Valdosta Lowndes County, I'll get it straight. The only Board of Appeals. Uh, the way we operate, I will call each case by case number and case name. Someone from staff will come to the lectern and present the request. During or after the request, there will probably be discussions and or questions among board members to staff. Once we're satisfied that we have heard that presentation, I will then ask if the applicant or anyone wanting to represent the applicant is here to give us any additional information. Please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information you'd like for us to take under advisement. If there are multiple people that wish to speak, we would like to give everybody a chance to speak. But if what you want to bring to the board has already been brought to the board, we would ask that you refrain from extending the meeting. If you feel like something has not been brought to our attention that is important, please come to the lectern and give us your name and address for the record and the information that you feel like we need to take on the file. After you have presented the information, there will probably be questions and or discussions with board members. Once we are satisfied, we have heard and understood the request, then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition, or if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested. If so, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and whatever concerns you have or questions you have about what's being asked, we will then have potentially other discussions between board members. Once we have heard from both sides, we will generally render a decision here today. However, it is within bylaws that if we feel like information is lacking or parties need to discuss issues, we do have the right to postpone action until the next regularly scheduled meeting. And as you are advised earlier if you have not signed in please sign in for us so we have a record of your attendance here at the meeting the first case we'll call today is a Lowndes County case VAR 2015-01 Robert Dinkins for Lake of Lapahaw Boulevard in Naval. Good afternoon Carmela. Good afternoon you all. How are you all today? Um, I'll first kind of start with this case um, is a man's request Submitted by Mr. Dinkins. This is a variance request to the county's water connection requirement. Such so property is located off of Lake Alapaha Boulevard. Such so property consists of about five lots. In this case, the applicant is requesting relief um, from connecting to the county's water system. The code requires that anytime there is a division of property, um, and if you're within a thousand feet of the county's water system, or if there is a planned development um, or a development plan for a piece of property that's planned for development, and you're within that footage requirement that you're required to connect. Um, in this case, um, back in 2007, the property underwent a auction, a land auction, which created several tracts of land, and um, the property was part of the parent tract which was within the footage requirement of the county's water system. Um, the county did allow the applicant to uh, sell lots, record a flat, um, when we normally don't allow that. Um, we normally allow you to construct the water lines before you're allowed to sell the lots. But in this case, the county allowed um, the property owner to sell lots, um, but put a note on the flat that, you know, when the property is developed or subdivided that you would connect. Um, the county's water system or water line is about anywhere from 1,200 to 800 feet from the property that is proposed now to be developed. 
did bring with me, um, I don't know if I included in your staff report, but the auction that was held back in 2007 does make mention of the connection to the county board. That's it? Yes. Any other questions, any other discussions among the board or to the staff at this time? I've got questions. I would like to, uh, to tell you that uh, in the auction that when we bought this land, uh, we were told, and, and uh, the auctioneers here who dealt with the county in developing that auction, that uh, when the water was run, or if it was at your property, then you had to connect it. To it and it would be at our expense. Uh, if I think you probably have the statement that is on that plat 
If not, I'd like to read it to you because it really details exactly what the county is going to require. It says this property, this is what's on the plan, this property will be served by county water to be provided by the owner. Uh, we were told, and, that, and it's always been uh, the knowledge that that meant when the water was, was put in front of the property that we would have to connect to it. Or if we subdivided uh, those bigger tracks, then you know, we would probably have to do that then, unless it was, uh, I talked to Mike Allen after Carolyn bought that, that largest track there, and uh, we discussed that possibility if we uh, developed it in one acre lots or larger, uh, we could put wells and septic tanks on it. And so that was never uh, the, the interpretation of that statement uh, until recently by the staff that uh, it meant that, that whoever built on one of these lots had to run the water line and so forth. It's preposterous. I got a, a copy of of a application, I mean of a uh, bill to run the water line 1,800 feet up that road. It came, I believe it was $37,500. Right. We have a copy of that in the okay. application. Uh, that's overburdened for any person who wants to build uh, a, a uh, house on one of those lots. Uh, somebody who is building on a 15 acre lot would not need to have to pay the water bill when he could put a well down because he'll have a garden and he'll have a lot of other things that, that uh, horses may be or you know, whatever he wants to do with it. It would be extremely expensive. Uh, you have my letter, I'm sure, and just for the record, I would like to read it so that if you can ask me some questions based on what I've said if you have not read it. Uh, we, Robert and Carolyn Dinkins, are requesting a variance from the ruling made by Jason Davenport and Mike Allen when they refused the building permit to our buyer for 15 acres of lot number 7, which is map 0259 parcel 029B located on your Exhibit A. They stated no building permit would be issued until the main water line was installed from this track back to the existing water lines. Uh, even though our buyer informed them that his intent was to have a, his own private well. Uh, this property has several tracts of land and several tracts of land are located a considerable distance from the county water lines than the distance required by the ULDC rule 404-02-F2. Since our track is larger in size and fewer in number, we request a variance from ULDC 404-02-F. Uh, from the requirements to connect to the county water system, uh, Mr. Davenport and Mr. Allen. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. We have the benefit of the entire this, this is part of the applicant's application and it will be part of the minute. Okay. So there's, there's no reason to read it anymore. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I would like to point out a couple of things that uh, is happening down in uh, Hidden Cove, the subdivision that has been developed on the south end of Lake Alapaha by the developer. Uh, it has that water system in it that goes, they have 51 lots in that subdivision. There is three, two houses built in there, and uh, the county is consistently, every day, running the water out of the lines to purge them, to keep them uh, where the people can drink water out of it. They, they, the water gets stagnated and stale, uh, so they have had to do that. They have an automatic... Uh, unit on there and I would like to give, I think I have enough for everybody to see but these are pictures if you would look at them as to what's happening on, on those, at those sites. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if I have one for everybody to show the um, That This chlorinated water is running across the private lot behind it and down at the end of the lake. Uh, and fish are not able to stay around that area because of, of the chlorinated water that constantly runs into the lake. Now those pictures are only of that one site and there are <coughs> different pictures that runs along the breadth of that little depression and down into the lake. Uh, my point there is it's a nebulous situation to run this big line water line up to the north to these few lots because we, we are going to only sell these lots in larger tracks. We, we have this bigger track that we plan to sell in about five different tracks or less, uh, the way we, we would break it up. Now, there, there's the two small lots up at the top corner next to the railroad have already been subdivided. And I've given you a copy of that plat. And uh, that plat, this subdivision was done in 08, and I'm telling you this, to prove to you a, uh, the fact that that statement on the main plat that the uh, county spoke of did, uh, did not mean what it, they say it means today. Because in 08, we subdivided this tract of land. It was, there was three acres there. And the county allowed us to subdivide that uh, up there without running the water. And in fact, if you see on the plat at the bottom there, I've highlighted it. It says this property will be served by individual well and septic system. So they have changed, tried to change the meaning uh, of what the original plat said to make it say what they wanted to say. I'm sorry to say. I have a question, sir. Yes, ma'am. On your quote that you have from the um, installer, about the potential of a... Um, 1,800 feet? Yeah. yeah. Why is it 1,800 feet? Well, that 1,800 feet, we had, at the time that this all was in discussion, I had another customer who was interested in buying a 20-acre track on the north end of that large track. And so I had it... I had it How uh, close is your property to the water line? Well, Camilla just said it was 12 to 1,800 feet, depending on what area of the property that you're talking about. Now, I'm going to ask Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Fletcher, do you know how close his, how many feet it is to his property? It's about 1,200 feet from the corner. So that's, that's about right. That if you start, property that we have started the water line, if you start the water line here and measure to the corner of the property, it's about 1,200 feet. But because that was, he was subdivided off. You have two lots in here. That's why he was leaving right. the addition. Okay, to and because feet. these were divided from the parent tract in 2007, where water was present, that's why all of these subtracts have that attached to them. You didn't make the when they were divided at that time to run the water. That's true. We did not make them do it uh, as part of the auction because it was in bankruptcy foreclosure. Okay. We did not make them do that for the auction. I have another question for Carmel. This is zone R21. R21. They can't have horses on R21. That's correct. Okay, so your fellow's going to buy 15 acres and have horses. It's not zoned for that. Well, I, I just made the same thing about the horses, whatever they want to do with it. Uh, because, you know, they would have to deal with that when they bought the land. But uh, <clears throat> my point is that on 15 acres of land, uh, well, but this, my, they, would, they could have a garden. Well, they could have a garden, but zoned at R21, it could be divided into very small lots. It could be continually <coughs> subdivided. And, and those couldn't have wells on their property because the size of the lot is too small. That's right? correct. So R21. as it's zoned right now with R21, the only option that they really have is to run water to it. Yeah, because of the potential for development. Because of the potential for development. That's correct. But if anyone wanted to develop that, they would have to go through the whole provisions of the ULDC. Uh, we're not selling it subject to them being able to divide it. We're selling it 
15 acres or 5 acres or 10 acres. It's already zoned. Uh, it's already, it's already zoned, zoned for the smaller uh, lots. I understand. So they can buy right, make it into smaller okay, lots. Well, if they do that, then they can run the water line. My point is that we're we're not selling it in lot small enough tracks, and there's no requirements under the ULDC to make us require us to run it because we're more than a thousand feet away. And the only reason that the that staff is saying that we must do it is because they're reaching way back sometime before we bought this property to a plant that says a a very obscure but, but line. that was on the plat when you bought it. Ma'am? That was that that language was on the plat when Well you it was it. on the plat when we got it, but we didn't have the plat when we bought it. The plat was done after the after the uh, purchase and the survey was done. And uh, we we were even well, I mean, if you read that statement that I just read to you, it doesn't say anything about that you've got to run a main water line down to your property before you can get a permit. I, I, I Mr. Jenkins, I've got a question for you. Okay. When, you, when, you when you bought the property through the auction, you knew through the advertisement of the auction that tracks three through five required you to hook up a county water. And that's when, what we're talking about. When the water was available, but the water was not available at that time uh, to the in front of the lot. They didn't say anything about that we had to run a six or eight inch line down there. We understood that that statement on there meant that when the water was available, because see, uh, from the, the lower yellow line of where the water system is that was pointed out, coming south, all of those lots were sold at auction too, and they had water on them. The, the water lines were in front of those lots. And so there's several houses been built in there, and they hooked up at their own expense to those main water lines that were there. But good running north from the well system, there was no water lines, and we were told that at such time as when the water lines were available, then we would have to hook up to it, no matter whether you had one acre or five acres or whatever. But I'm, what I'm, what I want to make reference again to is that 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 uh, determination was made recently by the county because when we subdivided, subdivided this in 08 they didn't require that they told us way up on the north that we could have a, a well and septic tank on those one acre tracks but what i'm saying to you is this is a new requirement from the county that didn't exist. And the auctioneer is here, he'll speak for himself as to what he understood and what, what the staff worked out with him about the water system. So. Yes, sir. We'll hear from Let's keep hearing from people who are here. Do you have anything else to say? I don't think so. Do you have any questions? I have one question. I'm sorry, but the, um, the county has been saying that they're going to build the Was the purchase of this done at the same time that she purchased this other property in auction? Yes, but it was purchased by a different individual. And my son and I bought those, that one, it was a one three acre, point three acre track. Three acre, three point three acre track. And when we bought it, it was a commercial track of land. And we changed the, the commercial rate of zoning to residential on two of those acres and subdivided it. And it was, there was no requirement at that time that we would have to run that water line up there because that's not what this item meant on the main plat at that time. It's just been recently since some point in time that the county is saying that that's what that sentence meant. Okay. Is there anyone else? Would like to speak on behalf of this request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nicholas. I'm a little taller than 
much for paying me. I'm a little bigger too. Uh, my name is Julian Cloud. I own professional auctioneers here in Valdosta. And my company is the company that auctioned off. And I'd like to clarify something that, that was said a while ago. This was not a bankruptcy auction or a distress auction. This was a court-ordered auction for the dissolution of a partnership. Okay? So there was no financial duress involved at the time of the sale. And at that time, both partners had the opportunity, just like the buying public, to repurchase and retain ownership of any part of the development that they would like to own. And so, you know, it was a situation basically where the two partners couldn't agree to disagree. So the judge said, sell it all, buy back what you want, and divide the money, problem solved. Okay? So that was the purpose, purpose of the auction. I have auctioned property in Lambs County for over 30 years now. And I believe that Mr. Davenport and Mr. Pritchett and the county engineer and all of them will tell you that I don't do a lot of auctions, but I try to do them right. I do all my homework and I do all my research. And I camped out with Mr. Davenport and Mr. Allen and Mr. Pritchett for a good while over what to do with the land north of the water system. There's one other aspect that hadn't been mentioned at this point. At the time we did the auction, and, and y'all forgive me for having my back to you, but I can't look at the screen, and, and y'all as well. But at the time we did the auction in 07, there not only was no water lines north of the well, there was no water capacity to serve anything north of the well. And in fact, there were some subdivided lots south of the well in the subdivision that it was questionable because of a letter that had been circulated to the residents that we could even get water served to those lots. And those were half acre lots if somebody bought them. <coughs> and I did secure a commitment in a letter that I have in my file at the office from the county stating that those lots south of the well would be serviced water, even though the capacity was low and that there was problems within the water system at that time because of low capacity, that they would service those lots if people bought them. And I also have a letter in my file, and I worked in, in with Mr. Dinkins and Mr. Ziegler and, and helped the county secure some additional land that they did not own at the time for the purpose of giving them adequate land to drill two more wells and put in a chlorination system to improve both the quality and the quantity of water that the system could put out and the lots that it could serve. And the intent was, in fact, I think it stated in my letter that they were going to put in two wells and spend probably over a million dollars in improvements to get that system up to the standards it needed to be up to. And we did put in the auction brochure that all of the lots, the tracks, the bigger tracks that I had subdivided north of the well that the water source would be the county water system because that was the intent at whatever point in time in the future that the county did drill the wells and did construct the extra equipment and had the capacity to service north of the well site. But their intention at that time was as needed to extend the water line, the water main right on up to the very tip of the property out there so it's providing water for any future development. So then that left me in a situation, okay, if I'm going, you know, if that's the ultimate objective, and, and that's where we're headed somewhere in the future, what's somebody gonna do to buy some of these tracks in the meantime? Okay. Well again, I was I was told at that time what I had already knew and had already been, you know, was always my understanding that until those water lines were put in front of those lots by the county or within a thousand feet of a lot 
by the county that those landowners could service their tracks by well, by private water system. And so, you know, even though we didn't state in our brochure that you can put down a private well to service it, that was the understanding, and that's what I referred them to if that question was asked of me by anybody prior to the auction. Can I put down a well in a septic tank? My answer would be, it's my understanding that you can use a private well until such time that the county runs the water main within a thousand feet of your property. Then they can require you to have home. And then the other thing that was mentioned to me, and, and I put this information out to a lot of people, if you buy one of those 15 or 20 acre tracks, and you want to go in and put a street down the middle of it and cut it up in half acre lots and create a new subdivision, there's no question that you have got to work with the county to get that water line up there to service 20 or 30 lots that you're going to create. And of course, there was never any misunderstanding in anybody's mind in that regard. Uh, it appears to me that what Mr. Dinkins is being asked to do at this point in time is not in the spirit of what information we put out at the auction that was provided to us by the county. Okay? And although rules and regulations are critically important to economic and stable development, you can't write a rule or regulation that applies to every circumstance. You gotta have some flexibility for those pieces of the puzzle sometimes that just don't fit. Okay? And you got a situation here where he is still outside of the thousand foot roof. He's dealing in large tracks. We're not dealing about him creating a half acre lot subdivision. And most importantly, the county has not placed the water line close enough to him yet to require him to tap onto it. And so, and I, I'm for the life of me in the tracks this big, you know, I can't see the benefit in it for the county require that line to be running to require five or six homeowners to tap onto a line that they're going to have to service and maintain on tracks that may never be subdivided any smaller. I mean, it's only taken 35 years to sell what few lots they got out there now. You know, I, don't, I don't see nobody jumping out there and developing a subdivision anytime soon. Uh, you know, it appears that they are putting an undue burden on Mr. and Ms. Dinkins for such large lots and such few lots. Uh, as the old timer once says, you know, when you really look at it, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. Okay? And I think this is a situation where I would ask this board to grant him the variance because it seems the most it seems the most fair thing to do in the situation. Why burden him? to run a line past five or six other property owners that are going to benefit solely at his expense. And I know Carmelo said there may be some way he can get it back. <laughs> Many of you ever tried that? I know some people have. Okay, so, you know, I, I, think, I, think, the, I think the request is unfair and I would ask that y'all consider granting the variance. Any questions? Yeah, I have one. And all of the discussions and everything that you were having at this time, the time that we were talking about cutting all this up, is anything in right? Do you have anything that specifically says the county would run the water up there, or was that vague enough that the county assumed they were doing it and you assumed the county was doing it? Or other than the, the notation on the plat that said, well, I think the, I don't have anything specifically, a specific letter in writing to that effect. I think the, the thing that makes it pretty obvious is the thousand foot rule. In, in no place that I know of does it says that does, does that rule imply that an individual landowner has got to be required to run the county water line in front of his lot before he's required to tap onto it. Okay, so, uh, and I don't know of any instance.
chance of success and an intense development where you're talking about half acre lots or so. I don't know of an instance, maybe they can point out some, but I don't know of an instance where the county has ever made an individual landowner run their own main line over a thousand feet just to get them the privilege to turn around and pay a tap on fees to get onto it. I don't know of any. Anyway, any other questions? Any other questions, discussions? Anyone else here in support who would like to speak? Thank you. Is there anyone here in opposition or has a question about what is being requested that needs to be brought to the board? Okay. At this point, I'm going to ask some questions. Okay. Carmelis, please come to the lectern. <clears throat> Are there any circumstances where a private owner has had to run their own main line? Yes. Yes, that's a requirement. The county doesn't run that line for them if they are within that, that buffer area. They have to run the line. We've had a number to come before you all and ask variances to that. Um, but yes, they're required to construct that line. I still am missing how he can be required to do this when the closest corner is 1,200. It goes back to the parent track. It goes back to the parent track. Ms. Hall, these folks here, when they, when they developed, they extended at their own call. Carmel, am I correct in kind of, um, tagging on what Carmel said? Carmel said that the an exception was given at the time of the auction that normally when the auction or the subdivision would have taken place of that parent property the line would have had to have been ran before they did that yes. so we, it had that been done before the auction the water line would have been there and we wouldn't be here right now but a, a variance was asked or an exception was made so that the auction could take place. Yeah, we did it in time. an effort to help, sure. To, sure. to help, you know, to help. I have a question about the Lake of Alapaha Wells. Um, we have spent with our SPLOS money, everybody in this room who pays any SPLOS money, millions of dollars to upgrade those wells. How deep are they? I don't know how deep they are, but I know we spent over a million dollars out there already uh, upgrading those wells. Uh, well, and, and, the, and, and we're also uh, in the process right now is in the design, uh, and they've already turned in plans to inspections, but we're putting in a MIAC system to improve the quality of the water so they don't have to flush as often. Well, my concern is about those wells is the it's my understanding that the reason that we've had to spend so much money on those is because river water has been seeping in, so surface water has been seeping into groundwater um, because of, uh, and that's shown in the, the chemical composition of the water. When they do those water tests and they're failing, it's because surface water is coming into the groundwater. So if these landowners were allowed to make wells near to the river, could they find that same problem in their wells? They would. They would. They'll find, they'll find those same, uh, just try to that thing is what they're going to find. And, that, and that's just the, that's the nature of the uh, organics that are in the ground uh, near the rivers. That is only if you chlorinate. If you chlorinate it, then it's always trying to it does not. But you still have the mixing of the waters, of the surface water with the ground water. Well, I have a house out there. We have good water right on the lake. I got county water out there, and you can't drink it. Well, what was the purpose of the EPA, the comprehensive plan, getting the uh, left arm group involved in, in the first place? I'm sorry, sir. What was the purpose of the EPA, and why were they called in in the first place concerning yeah. that problem? Uh, Mr. Dinkins owned the water system, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess through the uh, the county was the trusted denture of the system, mm -hmm. 
uh, and so the county was forced to take over the water system by the EPD, and so we were forced to upgrade what was out there. And uh, we had, we had, I said we spent over a million dollars already upgrading what's out there, and going to spend another seven hundred fifty thousand dollars put in the mining system. So you said EPA caused all of this in the first place. EPD is required. Is mandated. Is man we were mandated to take care of that system. The more they expand, the worse the water is. May I, may I tell you how that was? That's not true. Uh, what happened is when Lake Lapahoe Development, when Lake Lapahoe Development Corporation built that water system, it was owned by them and not me. I was just a partner in that corporation. Uh, we did a trust indenture with the county commission back when Fred Deloach was the county commission chair. And uh, that indenture said that it, any time that we were not able to maintain the water system and the roads, we intended to have private roads out there. And uh, the county would take them over at our request. And the corporation had failed, uh, the bank was uh, giving us a lot of trouble, the EPA had given us a lot of trouble with the, with the lake, building of the lake, and uh, we asked the county to take it over. The EPA, the EPD did not uh, require that to happen. They took it over and operated it for quite some time before there was any request or any involvement with the EPD. Uh, I was there, so I, I, I know what happened. Uh, Mike, was, Mike came in after all that took place. So. And uh, so while I'm up here, may I finish my presentation? There was a couple of things. Now this, uh, yeah, this is the, important, but let's, let's move on. Okay. The ULDC has the right, I mean, the, uh, the, the ZPA has the right, where there is an extraordinarily exceptional condition pertaining particular place of property in question of, as to size to grant a variance. This is coming out of, out of the ULDC. Uh, it also had, when the application of the ULDC uh, is a particular piece of property, would create unnecessary hardship. You have to... Yes, sir. Right. We're, we're well aware of that. Okay, well, I'm aware of that. There's several different things that we say that we you can have the right to do that for us. It's, there's no we doubt that, ask you to there, do. there's no doubt that we have the authority to do that. It's just once we determine how the board sees this as to how to make that move. Right. Thank you. Yes. I, I have another question for staff. Um, if we were to grant this variance mm -hmm. and it goes with the property, mm -hmm. that property is then subdivided into R21 Lots. Could they do community well? If you granted them a variance, the variance would be so they can they didn't have to commit to the county system. Right. Yes. So they, they can, then could make a community well. Yes, unless you condition it. And then on top of that, something to pay wire and the county has to pay you back over your heat. It, everything out there is currently served by septic systems, correct? That's correct. What is the minimum lot size required for a septic system? It's like four acres, isn't it? Typically, it depends on a number of things, the soil types. Um, if you have an individual private well or if you're on a community water system or a public water system, it, the lot size vary. But typically, we've seen a lot size as small as, Jason, you can help me that. 15,000 square feet operate with a community water system and an individual septic tank. That's roughly, what, half an acre? About a third, 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 third of an acre. acre.
Can I ask one other question? Sure. Uh, in one of the documents you gave us, it had the property out there along 84 shown as commercial. Is that currently still commercial property? Yes, it has, is. Or has that been redeveloped? Um, I mean, or rezoned as? The property is along 84, still going how we, I mean, the crossroads is commercial. Okay. Yes. other questions or discussions? I did want to mention um, there back in 2008 the plat that the applicant was referencing um, we did go back and pull the records um, and try to make sense of why he wasn't required to connect at that time and at that time staff went back and forth of either you know requiring him to connect or whether he can do the individual well accepted and staff made a determination that that side of the property, it was already an independent lot and not part of the parent track. So that's why he wasn't required to connect to the county. So saw the small tracks up on the corner. Up on the corner. Yes. So there, there was some discussion. When he brought that to our attention, we went back and, and tried to look that up because it's like, we thought we made a mistake, but that's what he, the determination was. That was subdivided that way at the auction. It was not already there. Is that it was, it was all commercial. Way. It was all commercial. I'd like to make a couple statements concerning this issue. First of all, I have to mention the fact that this EPA situation uh, got a little history to it. There's a matter of interpretation that seems to be lacking between the uh, mill. DC and the property owners. Um, this lack of interpretation brings up a lot of questions. Then we've got this other issue of being the properties beyond 1,000 feet. Then you got another issue of dealing with the amount of money that's going to cost for this individual to run that line. I think everybody ought to be able to pay. Sooner or later, that, that system has to pay for itself. We can't continue to pay for it as, as a property tax. <coughs> Taxpayers, you've got property on the left there that someday, someday will be subdivided. They'll get a free ride if the line's already run over to the top. So I have some questions uh, that probably cannot be answered here today. And I would rather not vote on it, or I would make a motion to be at that point to grant this variance. Now, maybe there may be some more discussion. That's my take. How, how can we get the answers to some of those questions? Uh, uh, Carmilla, can you provide additional information that would help resolve some of the questions presented by Dr. House? Because from where I sit, I don't think you can. I, I cannot. You know, that's why the variance process avails itself to make those kind of hard decisions. Um, we, we understand. I, I, I'm a little troubled by <coughs> the difference in 2008 and today. So for what it's worth, I'm a little concerned about that discrepancy. My concern is that all of this property on this map that I'm looking at right here is zoned R21. Uh, I wouldn't have any trouble granting a variance if this was a state agriculture. These were giant lots that were EA. But if we have them already <coughs> provided to say they, by right, are R21, I, I, I can't in good conscience say that they could do this because then it just opens a can of worms to say other things could happen and especially on that big lot that's to the left of the road that's a giant lot and so if we said this lot doesn't have to connect then that giant lot doesn't have to connect and another community water system happens out there that, that just wouldn't be a good thing if that was one big EA thing I'd be fine no problem because the zoning request would re-trigger Right. The extension of the water system. Mr. Chair, here, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'm prepared to make one. Hang on just a minute.
that's bolted here. You know, we have several bolted aspects of our The big drive cross street is owned by the African. All the all the lots that are highlighted are owned by the African. And he's requesting the variance to all of those lots. The yellow lot, this yes. this one right here. Yes, yes. Is All five lots he's requesting the relief to not connect the water. Not just the 15 acre. No, all of those lots. So he would have benefit from extending, even though at this current time, trying to sell the 15 acres, the extension of the water line would benefit him to the other pieces of property as well. Any other questions or discussions before I call the question? Can I entertain a motion on this request? Make a motion that the variance be denied. I have a motion on the floor for Ms. Gaskins to deny the request as presented. Is there a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Quarterman. I got a quick question before you call. Go ahead, call the question. I just wanted to find out from Carmelo whether anybody called the calls. Oh. No, no calls. Sorry, you asked me that and I didn't do it. Okay, I have a motion on the floor for Ms. Gaskins to deny as requested. Presented. I have second from Ms. Portman. All in favor of the denial, please raise a hand. All right. And that will leave with three, so you've got a four three. Yeah. Four three is your vote, and it was denied. All right, Mr. Jenkins, see if you can work something else out. Okay, we're going to give everybody a couple minutes to clear the room before we tackle some more business. Hang, hang on, everybody. Wait, wait just a second. You got to raise the hand. Raise the hands. Those that voted to support the denial, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay. So you had four, three. I, I yeah. thought I was counting. So, yeah. so now you want to ask them who's opposed? Who's opposed? So you got four, three votes. Right. So, yes. Just chair, just to Huh? Thank you. I was made to think I couldn't count. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, other minute, other business approval of the minutes. Anybody see a problem with the minutes? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I have a motion for Ms. Plyler, second. Second. I have a second Dr. Howell, all in favor. Unanimous. Uh, before we move on, Gretchen, you had a question about the posting of the agenda. I, I do. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm an advocate of open and transparent government, and the agendas for these meetings used to be being posted on the city's website in the Zoning Board of Appeals area, along with the minutes, and the last two months' agendas have not been posted. And so I would ask, please, that we be more diligent in the posting of the agendas ahead of the meeting, in addition to the summaries of the meetings and the minutes and the 